say concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. That is why my message is on that. You either have hope, the real hope, the true hope, the eternal hope, or you have no hope. Or you have hope that will be disappointed. And that's why the Lord is telling us, keep that your hope alive. How are we going to do that? Number one, we see the blessed hope and anchor for our soul. The hope that the Lord has given to us. The soul of man needs an anchor. The soul of man needs somewhere to wage himself. In Hebrews chapter 6. Look at the word of God. This blessed hope is the anchor for our soul. So we are not confused. So we are not asking questions. So we are not saying, why is this so? What is happening? Why is it like that? When we know about this blessed hope, it becomes an anchor for our soul. In uh, Look at that verse. You will see in Hebrews chapter 6. I'm reading verse 18. And verse 19, the word of God is very clear. It says that by two, verse 19 and 20, pardon, it says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entered into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. We have an hope. And the Bible says that hope is an anchor of our soul. And the Bible describes that hope. It says it is steadfast. Because God that gave us that hope is faithful. He's steadfast and sure. He cannot fail you. He cannot disappoint you. No matter what you are passing through, no matter what you are going through, that hope will be an anchor for your soul. As we look at the word of God and we see this blessed hope, what does it assure us? What does it for? for? It is very simple. You can be a child of God. You can give your heart to the Lord. You can surrender your life to the Lord because the mercy of God is quite available to every one of us. You will see. That is why Paul the Apostle asked that question. He said, if only in this life we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. That hope is beyond the grave. We have a hope that is beyond the grave. We have a hope that after this life has passed, it is not over. Everything has not ended. Many people erroneously say that. They say it is man thy goal. You die and that's the end. Therefore, eat and drink. Do whatever you like. Live anyhow you like. No, they'll be disappointed. There are many reasons why we know that life does not end by just death. You sleep, you find yourself in many other places. And the experiences of many people have shown us that this is not the end of life. There is an afterlife. And that afterlife is not left under our control. When we live here, it is only here. While we are here now, we can control our afterlife. We can prepare for our afterlife. We can be ready and we can have this hope as an anchor for our soul. In First uh, Corinthians where we read, look at chapter 15 and the Bible tells us in verse 19 again, First Corinthians 15 verse 19, Paul the Apostle, he knew about this hope, he saw this hope, he embraced this hope, he preached this hope, he declared it, he suffered for it, he fought gallantly for it. In verse, uh, look at it here, in verse 19 and 20, he said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. That tells us a category of people. There are those who have hope in this life only. What a miserable thing it will be. Then when they die, all is finished. Then when they die, all the certificate is lost. 
When they die, their property is given to whosoever they don't know what that person will do with the property. When they die, all their homes are perished. But thank God, there is hope beyond the grave. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen? And we are very sure from every indication, from every testimony, our mother is resting now. I say it's resting now. And by the grace of God, we shall see her again. The Bible tells me here in verse 20, Paul now makes it clear, very clear, pointedly, right there in verse 20, it says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. The death of Christ, then the resurrection of Christ brings that hope. And what is the hope? Hope of life beyond the grave. Blissful life. Blessed life. Blessed ending. So we are not just living for bread and butter and for dress and for house and for clothes. We are living for something that will be eternal forever and ever and ever. Amen. Titus chapter 2 again. Look at that verse 17. That is why the Bible tells me, looking for that blessed hope. That's how it describes it. The blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is very unfortunate. And we need to declare it plain and wide. It is very unfortunate that in Christendom, this hope is fading away. And many people that go to church, they don't know about this hope. Blessed hope of the imminent coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll tell you ten things about this hope. Maybe when we do that, we are done. i tell you ten things. What's this hope that the Bible is telling us about? Number one, it is hope of the resurrection. That somebody that dies, no matter how he dies, is going to rise again. I say he's going to rise again. That's why you are not discouraged. You are not behaving as somebody who is hopeless. Because you know that whatever happens, no matter whatever and however an individual dies, wherever he dies, on that day he will rise again. Hallelujah. Number two is the hope of the appearing of Christ. Christ came into this world. He died. Then he rose again. And he said, I go to prepare a place. And when I go and prepare, I will come again. I will come again. And I will receive you unto myself. That's the blessed hope. And we are waiting for it. And we are looking forward for it. We are not looking down. We are looking up. We are looking up. We are looking up, and very soon, heaven will be split open. And the Son of Man, the Son of God, He will come through in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the hope we have. It is the hope of unification of the dead saints and the living saints. You lost somebody, don't give up. That's not the end. You lost somebody, don't think it is over. We will see how one another wants it. Is that not glorious? Is that not wonderful? Unification. Eternal fellowship. You know what it means? Somebody traveled abroad and then he stayed there four years, five years, like a sister at the time. The, the, the brother has traveled for over ten years. No news, no message, nothing. Listen to me. It was in one women fellowship. They came here and the pastor prayed. I say that somebody has a body in your heart, your, your brother or somebody you have been waiting for for over years. And immediately that sister went home, the brother never spoke, never ran for 10 years, he ran from America. He said, I have my life, I'm coming home. And I'm telling you, Jesus is coming home. And when Jesus is coming again, and when he comes, he will bring the dead saints and the living saints together. That's why you must be sure you have this hope. And that is why we don't sorrow when we have this hope. Number four is the hope of divine comfort. God himself comforts us. He said he will wipe away our tears. He said he will comfort our hearts. You 
know, you know what it means for somebody to cry and cry and cry and nobody to wipe away the tears. But for somebody to be crying and to find somebody to talk and even use his own handkerchief and wipe away your tears and comfort your heart, God is going to wipe away our tears. Isn't that wonderful? That's the hope we have. But there are people that will cry and weep in another flesh, in hell fire, and nobody is going to wipe away their tears. He said the devil will be jesting at them and laughing at them and telling them, cry more. What's the hope we have? It's the hope of eternal glory, eternal honor, eternal promotion, eternal reign with our Lord Jesus Christ. We will reign with Christ for how long? How long? in the country and in other places they rule for five years, ten years and they pass on, they pass over they hand over the battle but when we get into this hope, into this glory how is it going to be? Wonderful I say wonderful I say wonderful forever and ever and ever see as the fire was just singing to us look at the music see how beautiful the music you wish they will continue singing, am I right? But you never had music. I tell you, never had music. When you get to heaven, when your feet enter into that party game, and you hear the music of the angels, I'm telling you, my friend, I pray you'll be part of it. You see, a brother, I remember, when I was in church, I know when they were sending me home from church, I said, brother, he came to me after the ten for He said, brother, please let me tell you something. Heaven is real. Heaven is real. I said, yes, I know. He said, no, it's not you know. Listen to me. I said, go ahead and tell me. He said, you see, one day, God took me to heaven. I said, you? He said, yes. He said, tell me what happened. He said, God took me to heaven and the angels were showing me all the streets in heaven. And I was holding my breath and said, so I have met heaven. So I have entered heaven. Oh God, I thank you. I'm now in heaven. And he was looking and he was saying, angel, please, do quickly and show me my mansion. Let me just go and relax. Angel said, hold on there. And he was showing him, this is this street. This is that street. That is that street. And that, and that. And you know, as he was in that ecstasy and joy, then the wife, came out and found the door. And the brother woke up. Ooh. You know what happened? He cried for one hour. Are you listening to me? He cried for... He told me with his own mouth. He said the wife was saying, my husband, what is wrong? He said, leave me alone. He just, he just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. When you reach heaven, you will cry. I pray you will not be sad. You see, this brother, after the one hour crying, he managed to console himself and then told the wife, see, you have brought me to this world. You! So what did I do? You don't know what you did. I have entered heaven already. I'm in heaven already. I'm still. Angel was conducting me, guiding me, directing me, showing me my show, showing me everything, and showing me the street. Then I don't know what happened. You find the door and I woke up. How I wish I have come from there. Are you that brother now? If the wife woke him up and then we shake him, Brother, no respond again. He shake him and say, my husband, wake up, wake up. And the husband didn't respond. What will he be doing? Uh -huh. But what will the husband be doing over there? Tell me very well. See what I'm telling you? That's the hope. That's the hope. And that brother said, Pastor, do you hear? This is my own personal experience. I know you believe it. I pray you'll be part of that glory also. The hope of our mansion, can you think about it? That for 2,000 years, Jesus is building mansion for us. Can you imagine how that mansion will be? 
you are looking at the mansions of the world, you are looking at all these mansions, but look at the mansion that Jesus, our Lord, has gone to build for how many years now? 2,000 plus. You must be there. I say you must enter that mansion. Your key is waiting for you. I don't even think you need key. I think you can just go there and say open to there, but the door opens for you. You enter into your mansion. It will be glorious. Let's keep this hope alive, brothers and sisters. Don't let anything to give you a hope. Don't let anything to darken your hope. Don't let anything to distract your hope. Heaven is real. And God has saved you to take you to heaven. What am I talking? This hope is the hope of endless joy. Look at the world. Is there any endless joy in the world? Happiness and joy. So they are happy. Tomorrow, sorrowful. So they are happy. Tomorrow, sorrowful. When you get to heaven, joy, 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 joy. Heaven is full of joy, joy, joy. Can you sing it? Heaven is full. Joy, 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 joy. No more we be. Amen.
is alive, he will be confined to utter darkness forever and ever. If the life you will cry and pray, and the prayer will not be heard, and the cry will not be, will, will not be responded to. It's a place where there is, you will get to a place no, no escape at all. It's a place that Satan will be laughing at you. What a hopeless situation. This man cried. And he said, Father, have mercy on me. Thank God the mercy of God is available to them. I say it's available to them. The rich man looked at Jesus and he said, Sorry, the, the thief looked at Jesus and he said, Lord, remember me. The Lord will remember you today. He will remember everyone today. But this man, I need to tell you, he's still in hellfire now. He's still crying there. He's over 2,000 years, Jesus said. He would have been an old man in hell. And yet he's crying in hell. May the Lord save us from hell. May the Lord deliver us from hell. May the Lord show us mercy today. Let me have a good amen. He was only asking for a drop of water from the supposedly deadly finger of Lazarus. He didn't mind at this time to cool his tongue because he was tormented. But Abraham turned him back. Can God turn somebody back? When it is too late, God will turn you back. But today is not too late. Thank God it's not too late. I say thank God it's not too late. And today the Lord is calling us to a blessed world. Our mother, by the grace of God, she had that blessed hope. And that's why you see how she passed on gloriously. The wicked men, do they die like that? They die, do they die peacefully? Do they die without confessing all the evil they have done? And yet nobody is ready to listen to their confession? Some wicked men, when they are dying, their children will carry them inside the, inside the room and lock them up there because they'll be confessing the evil they have done. But today you can confess to God. God will have mercy on you. Hallelujah. The mercy of God is flowing now. The same God that has saved us and saved our mother. And she labored for the Lord. And she went to her reward now. The same God is saving us. Do you want him to save you? Would you accept his mercy? Would you accept his plea? Would you accept his pardon? Would you accept his forgiveness? He's giving it out freely to anybody without discrimination of religion, of sex, or whatever. And this is how I call you. Can we rise up on our feet? As we go to God and say, Oh God, you as a believer, thank God that this is a glorious hour. This is an hour we will not forget. This is an hour that God has honored his and you are there. You want to partake of this glory, this blessed hope. The Lord is calling you. The mercy of God is available. And you as a child of God, keep that hope alive. Hold on to that hope. Be steadfast in the Lord. Don't let anything make you look left and right. Don't make anything dim your hope. Look up, look up. The hour is coming. The hour is drawing near. The Lord is coming very soon. Compared to his son. And you there, the Lord is calling you. Take a decision of faith and say, Lord, I've heard of your mercy and love. I don't want to cry without answer. I don't want to weep without answer. I don't want to weep and nobody is answering me. Have mercy on me now. I can receive mercy from you. Whatever you have done, whatever you have done, no matter many things you have swept under the carpet, whatever it is, the blood of Jesus can wash you whiter than snow, whosoever, whatsoever. Just say, Lord, I come, I come, I come to you, Lord, receive me. And the Lord will do it. In Jesus' name.